All right, so the other day, you guys helped install the mineral wool insulation, five inches of it, on the roof. And then on top of that, you put 5 8 sheathing. On top of that, you used a self-sealing membrane so that if any nails penetrate it, water can't get into the roof. And if any shingles should blow off, water can't get in the house. You've also installed the copper drip edge, and you tied it in with this self-sealing membrane. Now we're ready to install the shingles. Now, I like wood shingle roofs. I like the way they look. And I like the fact that when you put about a five to a five and a half inch reveal on a wood shingle roof, they're really strong against high winds. There's less chance of them blowing off. There is a couple of problems with wood that you have to be very careful of. See, if this shingle is wet, it gets wet when it rains. And when it rains, it swells and gets tight, like a wooden boat, and that's why it won't leak. But if these shingles lay on this roof like this, the underside can't dry out. So the sun will dry out the top, the bottom will stay wet, and they'll start to rot, and they'll also cup. So we have to solve that problem. And to solve that problem, we're actually going to use a breather material, a nylon matrix that you lay on the roof. The shingles will sit on that, and they'll actually sit on a bed of air underneath them, allowing them to dry, because the air can come up under here and across the sides. That's how you make a wood shingle last. All right, so the first thing we want to do is install our matrix across the bottom. All right, so now we're going to roll this out and I'm going to staple it right to the roof sheathing. Now when you staple it, you want to staple it about 24 to 36 inch squares just to hold it in place till we install our shingle. All right, you want to just cut it right off even with the drip edge. All right, now we're ready to get started. Let's have a couple of those shingles there, Kevin. Nope. And grab that gun up behind you. Okay, so now the trick to installing any roof shingle, it needs to overhang on the sides, about three quarters of an inch, and on the front leading edge, a wood shingle should be an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters from the face of the face board to the edge of the shingle. To do that, I just cut a two by four, lay it against the edge of the fascia board, and bring it up and bring my shingle up so we're even with that inch and a half. Now I'll just tack this shingle in place. I wanna keep my nail up about six inches. Okay, so that's my starter. Now I have to lay another one on top because the first edge has to be doubled or tripled in some case, but we're only going to double it here. Now I'm also going to make sure I nail up, again, five, or six, five and a half to six inches. I want to be higher than my reveal. I've got, I got to keep it back so I don't come out to the overhang. Put one and another one, and I want to be three quarters to an inch from the edge, and the nail shouldn't be driven too deep. So you want to keep the nail up high like that so it grabs as much of the meat of the wood, lessening the chance for it to lift off. We're using a stainless steel nail ring shank, two and a quarter inches long. All right, so now we're going to put another one on. I want to space the shingle slightly to allow for the expansion of the shingle. Make it the same distance off the fascia board. A couple of nails. I want to make sure that I have a gap, and I want to make sure I cover that gap by a minimum of an inch overlap. Space out my shingle about an eighth of an inch, because I, when these shingles get wet, they're going to expand and get tight when they swell. Nail up about six or seven inches, and nail it. Now we're ready for the next row, and we want a five and a half inch reveal, so we're going to just strike a line right across, and we'll take a shingle, bring it down, and again, I want to keep it on that line. I want the nail to be up about seven inches. Don't want to drive it too deep, but I want to be deeper than that. So I bring it down, tight to the surface. Okay, now we'll have another one that will span the gap and keep me away from this edge about, that's perfect, about an inch to an inch and a half. 
put it on my line, space it out about an eighth of an inch, just loosely touching it, and a couple more nails. Okay, now we're ready for the next row. Again, we want to make sure that it is three quarters of an inch over the edge. Keep it on my line. And then a couple more nails. All right, so what we've done is we've actually offset our shingles up. So that's enough for now. What we're gonna do is the same thing on the other side, making sure that our measurements are the same. To make sure the measurements are the same, I'm just gonna take a scrap shingle, gonna make it even on the bottom, and I'm gonna mark the bottom of each one of the rows. And I can take that and transfer it down the other end, and we don't have to use our tape measure. Awesome. All right, let's go down there. Okay, good. Now we've built up four courses here to match the four courses down there. We want to make sure our first line, our starter course, is straight. So to do that, we're going to put a nail right here on the edge of the shingle. And I'm going to take a string line, attach it to that nail, and we're going to bring it all the way down to the other end, do the same thing, keep our string line tight, and then bring the shingles to the string line. All right, so now you guys are ready to lay your force first course in all the way across the front of the roof. So you're going to take them, bring them down, line it up with the string line, continue all the way down, and nail them off, and double up that first course. All ready to do it? All right, I'm going to leave you guys to it. <laughs>